Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at truth values and truth tables for compound statements. First, let's talk about what a truth table is. A truth table is a table in which we consider all possible combinations of truth values for two or more statements. Great, what is a truth value? Oh, here it is. A truth value of a statement is either true or false, right? So I can give you a statement and that statement is either true or that statement is false. So when we look at just a single statement, we have true or false. And the way we would set up a truth table, if we just have one, we would say P could be true or false. It gets a little bit trickier when we have two simple statements. So if I have P and Q, well, they can both be true or false. But we look at all the possible combinations of the truth values. So we would want to look at when P is true and Q is true, when P is true and Q is false, when P is false and Q is true, and when P is false and Q is false. And this is not how we set up this truth table. Because that gave us four possibilities for different arrangements of truth values, we would need to set up a table with four rows beneath the headers. So as I mentioned, we could have true, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. So when there are two simple statements, we have four possible arrangements of truth values. We want to make sure we include every single one, right? We don't want to leave any possibility unturned. So that's what we would need. If there were more statements, we would need a bigger truth table and we would need more rows in that. And we'll talk about that later. In this video, we're only going to look at where we need four rows. Okay, so in terms of the truth values, Sometimes we are told whether the statement is true or false. So it might say P is a true statement and Q is a false statement, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes we're given a statement and we have to make the determination. So it might say something like the sky is green. And we would say, well, that's false. The sky is not green. Lastly, sometimes we're just given a situation and we create a truth table to consider all the possibilities. And when we do that, that's when we set up a truth table. For the first two, we're really just looking at one row on a truth table. But for the last one where we're, we, we don't know what P and Q are representing, we just look at all the different combinations. That's when we need the four rows. And then we would add up upon that. Right now, all we're going to look at is compound statements. So we're not going to worry too much about it, but we'll see a truth, some very basic truth tables in this video. We're going to start with a conjunction. Recall that a conjunction of two statements implies that both or all statements must be true. So in order for a conjunction to be true, both statements or all statements, whatever we're given, must be true. The symbols we use for a conjunction is P and Q. And a truth table would look like this for a conjunction. So again, there's four rows beneath the headers because we look at the four possibilities of true, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. And a conjunction is true when both P and Q are true, right? So if P represents the sky is, well, this needs to be a true statement, so the sky is blue. And Q also represents a true statement, so we'll say the grass is green. The sky is blue and the grass is green. That is a true statement. Both parts are true, so the conjunction itself is true. In the next row, we have P is a true statement, the sky is blue and we have a false statement, the grass is purple. So the sky is blue and the grass is purple is a false statement because the conjunction has to include both, both pieces must be true and the, sky, the grass is not purple. So that would be a false statement. The conjunction itself is false. Okay, if P is false and Q is true, so the sky is orange and the grass is green, that would also be a false statement because one piece, the, the sky is not orange. I'm looking at it, it's actually gray right now, but it's certainly not orange. And what if both statements are false? So the sky is orange and the grass is magenta. That would definitely be false. So for a conjunction to be true, both statements must be true. And I emphasize this over and over again because we have to know that in order for something like this, when we see this symbol to be true, Everything must be true. That's for conjunctions. Let's look at some examples of determining the truth value of conjunction statements. In our first example, we're going to let P represent Barack Obama was our 44th president and Q represent Abraham Lincoln was our first president. What's the truth value of P and Q? 
So P and Q. So P, in this case, Barack Obama was our 44th president. That is a true statement. Q, Abraham Lincoln was our first president, is a false statement. So we're looking at the combination of true and false. And you might recall from the previous slide that true and false is a false statement. So the conjunction is false. One piece was false, therefore the conjunction is false. Our next example, P is the earth is round and Q is the earth rotates around the sun. So what's the truth value of P and Q? Well, P, the earth is round, that is a true statement. And the earth rotates around the sun is a true statement. So the conjunction P and Q, since both parts are true, it would also be true. In our last example for conjunctions, P represents a false statement. So this time we're just told what we're dealing with here. We don't have to figure it out, so we know this is false. Q is true. The conjunction is, say it with me, false. The conjunction is false, right? We need both parts to be true for the conjunction to be true. Let's move on to disjunctions. So a disjunction implies that at least one of the statements must be true. So we're looking for this or this to be true or both pieces can be true. The symbols, the way we read this, P or Q. And a truth table would look like this. So we have our combinations where they're both true, where P is true and Q is false. P is false and Q is true. P is false and Q is false. Okay, so the sky is blue or the grass is green. Yeah, those are both true. So the disjunction is also true. Yep, that's fine. They, they can both be true. The sky is blue or the grass is purple. The sky is blue or the grass is purple because it's an or, this statement would be true. The sky is orange or the grass is green. Hey, one of those things is true. The disjunction is true. The sky is orange or the grass is purple. Nope, neither of those things are true, so the disjunction is false. So for a disjunction to be true, just one component needs to be true. Or maybe it's easier to think about the flip side. In order for a disjunction to be false, everything must be false. Let's look at some examples of disjunctions. Okay, P represents Barack Obama was our 44th president. Q represents Abraham Lincoln was our first. What's the truth value of P or Q? Well, P is true and Q is false. This is a disjunction. True or false yields a true disjunction. So this would be true. We would just write true. Let P represent the earth is round and Q represent the earth rotates around the sun. Then our disjunction, well, the earth is round is a true statement. The earth rotates around the sun is a true statement. The disjunction is true. So we would say the truth value here is true. Okay, let P represent a false statement and Q represent a true statement. Then the disjunction here, false or true, is true. We didn't see any false uh, disjunctions here. And again, in order for a disjunction to be false, it needs to be false or false. The last thing we're going to look at is negations of statements. So a negation of a statement has the opposite truth value of the given statement. So if I say the sky is blue, that statement is true, therefore its negation is false. And the negation would be the sky is not blue. We, we are going to assume that that's false. In symbols, we would say tilde P, but that reads not P. And the truth table, so because we're only looking at one simple statement, we only need two rows, right? Because we only can, P can only be true or it can be false. Not P has the exact opposite. So if P is true, not P is false. If P is false, not P is true. Okay, let's look at some examples. Barack Obama was our 44th president. That is a true statement, therefore the negation is false. P represents some soccer balls are, uh, soccer balls are cubes, and not P represents soccer balls are not cubes. cubes. Um, let's see, P, no, that's false. And therefore the negation would be true. So up here we would say false, and here we would say true. This has been an introduction to truth values and truth tables. Thank you for stopping by.